Welcome to the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost worship service. Whether you're worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or online, longtime member or a first time visitor, we all gather together as God's family and we hope that this service will be a blessing for you. I'll briefly cover a few announcements. Although the hurricanes in southeastern United States are not at the top of the news, both the Lutheran and United Church of Christ disaster response teams continue to assist on the long road to recovery in these areas. If you would like to help, there is a large soup pot at the sanctuary doors for cash or checks, or use an offering or pew envelope, or mail a donation to the church office. Make checks payable to Huff's Union Church and put a notation for hurricane relief. As announced, today we will have a special joyful noise offering as part of the children's message. The children will walk through the sanctuary with buckets to collect any coins you have, and Kathy will play some fun background music. Feel free to clap along. We'll definitely fill the sanctuary with the joyful sound of giving. The joyful noise offering will go to a Kutztown Friend, Inc. As you see on our bulletins, Friend Incorporated provides food and other assistance, particularly in rural communities in eastern and northern Berks County. Every month, Huff Church partners with the Friend Incorporated when they bring their far large food pantry truck to our parking lot, and Huff's members help load food and other supplies into the cars as they stop stop in serving about 90 people in our area. If you don't have coins today, there will be a bucket set out at the sanctuary entrance next week to drop your coins in. Just to note that paper money also is accepted for this important mission. Note the, important, note the information about the All Saints Remember Us service on Sunday, November 3rd during the 1030 worship service. We will light a candle in remembrance of those members and friends of Huff's Church who have died in the past year. The confirmation class will host light refreshments after the service, and if you can bring a snack, let Tess Wilzonski and John Benfield know. Thank you to everyone who helped in making the oyster pie sale a success. We sold about 600 oyster pies. The work and support is greatly appreciated for this big fundraiser. If you did arrange to pick up your pies today, please be sure to get them after the service in the lower level of the chapel. They do still have 15 oyster pies and several dozen fresh oysters to sell, so please come to the chapel after church but to buy some to take home. And they plot pies and oysters freeze well. Are there any other announcements to be noted? The following names are on our prayer list. Pastor John and Catherine, Agnes Stites, Ann Moyer, Peter Meitzler, family and friends of Reverend Dr. Victor Pisco as they gather for his memorial service. We hold the family and friends of Reverend Dr. Pisco in our prayers. On Saturday, there will be a memorial service at Huff's Church for Reverend Peichel. Reverend Peichel and his wife, Jance Mole, grew up in this area and were members of Huff's Church. He faithfully served the Lutheran Church in various ways for 35 years, last serving in the Pittsburgh area. The family invites friends from Huff's to this service, celebrating his life and ministry on Saturday, October 26 at 10.30 here at Huff's Church. Then we will begin our service, and I invite you to stand as you are able for the ringing of the bell and responsive reading of the call to worship and invocation in your bulletin. Let us come into God's presence and shout with the heavens. We have an amazing God. Clothed with honor and wrapped in glorious light, serving tirelessly, caring endlessly. We have a majestic creator who calls us beloved children. With humility and compassion, God has made the heavens and filled the earth with beauty. Let us come into God's presence. Let us meditate on the wonders of the Holy One, our Creator, Redeemer, and Savior. 
and let us pray. God of majesty and might, blow through this place like a mighty wind. Inspire us with your presence. Cover us with your love, that we might be your disciples, serving others, and care and compassion. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And let us join together in hymn number eight, Praise Ye the Lord. day today. Inside we sense the presence of God by being close to each other, by feeling God's spirit in these wonderful hymns that we raise, the music that we hear, the prayers that we will offer. So let us then be joyful because this is the day that God has made. It is like none other and you are a congregation of God's people who have never been here before together in this way, believe it or not. So welcome, my friends. Let us breathe in God's love. Let us remember that it is by the grace of God's hand through the gift of Jesus that we can confess with our lips and we can hear words of forgiveness and grace and we can go into the world challenged and renew, renewed. So let us then use the words as they are written and let us use our hearts to proclaim the ways in which we need to feel God's grace and presence. Let us pray together. Loving God, in our human condition, you know who we are. You know our awkwardness with ourselves, each other, and with you. You know the times when we have not seen the beauty in your world or each other. We confess the negative words and visions and the times we choose to believe there is no hope or change on the horizon. Forgive us when we have not seen your hand in the miracles of life around us. And when we have believed we created the abundance we enjoy. Give us a new vision of your kingdom come, your will be done. 
Give us the boldness by your presence of the Spirit to believe in your possibilities for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take a moment and remember and lift up in our hearts our own private and silent confessions. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, around us in our world, your heavens are proclaiming the good news of hope, of forgiveness and grace. We each have a new day in front of us. We have this day to receive your blessings, to know your love and grace, to be challenged by your words of forgiveness. So let us then remember that it is the gift of Jesus who has come to us, shared our common lot, and forgiven us. And it is by the grace and presence of Christ who was born and lived and died for us that we can know that compassion of God and the forgiveness of sin. So let us hear those words, you are forgiven. Now go and live differently because of Christ's presence in your life. May the love of God fill us with hope. Amen. Please, Please be, be seated. seated. Sorry. <laughs> we'll affirm our faith by joining in this responsive reading of the Statement of Faith printed in your bulletin. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, Declare through prophets and apostles. And Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and at Eda's table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins, fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, an eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be on to you. Amen. We'll continue with the children's message. The children are invited to sit in the front pew in front of the grand piano for a message with Pastor Angeli and be part of the joyful noise offering before going downstairs to Sunday school. I always feel bad on a Sunday that I get to see the smiling faces. Can you just stand up and turn around once so everybody can see you? This is a happy group of people. You are so fortunate to have this group. Thank you, you happy people, you. Well, um, okay, today is our joyful noise. And does anybody have a little change I could borrow? Okay, look at you have a whole purse. Just give me a couple little coins. I won't even give them back to you. How's that? Where, where's this money go? Anybody have an idea? Does it stay in house and everybody here takes a little when they leave? Do we use it to buy a big loaf, a big cake and celebrate somebody's birthday? What do we do with it? Where do you think it goes? What do you think? Help 
helping others. You got it. You got it. Helping others. And I just want to, I want to do two things. First of all, I want to hear, everybody listen. I mean, really put your hearing aids in. Hey, there's a bug in here, too. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's a bonus bug. This bug is blessed. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have been taking, does anybody know what sign language is? Do, do you know what it is? Why would you use sign language? Because you can communicate. Now, if I was deaf, if I couldn't hear, which everybody in my family says I can't hear real well, especially my husband, when I'm in the other room and I'm talking to him. Anyway, so, um, okay, so if you couldn't hear, you would have to have something to help you. Now, sometimes it'd be a buddy who might say, listen up, okay? But sometimes there's something called sign language, okay? And I've been taking this class in sign language, and I'm not at the point, and I do not think in these three months I'm going to be at the point to sign the whole service. So don't anybody go out and try to learn ASL for me. But I will tell you, I learned a couple, couple little things I wanted to tell you about. Now, when we say joyful in the, Bi in the Bible, there is lots of places in the Bible, and there's like a, an Isaiah passage, and it says, the trees clap their hands, and the mountains and hills start singing. You shall go forth in joy and be led forth in peace, and the mountains and the hills before you will break forth in singing, and all the trees shall, and the fields shall clap their hands. Do you know what clap their hands means in the Bible? Lots of times when you see clap their hands, guess what it means? It's a metaphor that means it means something else, and it's for joy. Isn't that cool? When they clap their hands. So I'm going to show you joy. Now, you're not going to, but you're going to, this. Let's do this once. Everybody can do this, this, but the next time you do it, you're going to go around. All right, so go, that's a joy. You've got to smile, too. If you look like this, it's not going to look very joyful. Let's see the joy. Come on, everybody. All right. Now, the other thing that's really interesting is you've got to kind of put your, put your thumbs together. All right, and and you, you start out here, and you're going to give it away. So it's joyful giving. So let's try joyful. And then giving. Don't you love the fact that giving comes from who? Right. I love that sign because it comes from us. Now, of course, God has given us many things. But let's remember when we're giving these, if someone was deaf here, and maybe there are, or having some hard time hearing, you could say to them, All right, so let's do this. Let's go around. If anybody wants to take the bug out, they're welcome to eat it. You know, there's a lot of protein in here. I won't do it, but people say those chocolate-covered ants are delish. Uh-oh, anybody ever eat a chocolate-covered ant? I, I know there's some here who have. Online, I know you have eaten some chocolate-covered ants. Let's, take, let's share these. Let's take some baskets out. Let's see if people will make some joyfulness. Let's see if we can hear some. I love these. These are like, we're going to, we're going to kind of like, can we both, can we carry them sort of together? Do we need like a little private one? All right, let's hear your joyful noises. If you have some, put them in there so we can hear them. Whoa! Let's hear your, whoa! Yes! You were a good saver. So take that basket. We're going to go out in the congregation and we're going to see if anybody else saved their change. If they didn't, they can do this and bring dollar bills or something else. All right, let's go out and, and figure out who's got something to joyfully give.
you know what we're going to do? I was wondering if you all can come up again. Put your hands on those as if you're putting hands on them for everybody here who gave. Okay? And we're going to bless them. Come on. All these joyful noises. Put your hands upon whichever ones you want to. It doesn't have to be yours. And this is kind of like the laying on of hands we do for all kinds of things in the church, and it kind of it means like everybody sort of is up here saying thanks. So let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, for the joyful noise that we have in our hearts. But thank you today that we have joyful noises that we can witness to and that we can share in this community and in the world. Thank you for our voices. Thank you for the signs that we have. Thank you for the giving that we have. Bless these children and bless this congregation and bless these givings, that they might be a way in which others feel empowered and feel blessed and know that they are a joyful noise in the world. For your blessings we pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. I think there is Sunday school. Is there Sunday school? That means you're going to make some more joyful noises. It's always the case that we have much to be grateful for. And I like to think that one of the gifts that Christ has given to us is that we have something to give back, whether it's your voice, whether it's your speaking, whether it's your playing, whether it's your monetary gifts. So that's why we have offerings. We have offerings because God loves us, because God knows that when we give, it makes our hearts smile and makes others feel not only appreciated, but being blessed by Christ. So let us then be joyful in all that we have. Thank you, God, for these moments in our worship and life when we can have something that others need. Take what we offer this day, bless it, and bless our use in the ministry of this church and our community. May your spirit be in the giving and in the direction of all we have to offer. Amen.
gracious God, that which we offer, may it be a blessing and may we be blessed to have been able to give into the world where there is much need. May your blessing be upon these gifts in your son's name, amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds to hear the Holy Scripture, please join in the prayer of illumination printed in the bulletin. O oh God, you spoke and the world came into being. You imagined the colors and beauty of the planet and all of the creation was covered in majesty and a rainbow of hope. You, O oh Holy One, have anointed our ears to hear and our mouths to proclaim the joy of your creative plan. We await with open hands to your words of scripture. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 104, verses 1 through 35. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light with the garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flames your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains. They ran down to the valleys to the place that you have appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they may not again cover the earth. You make strings gush forth in the valley. They flow between the hills. Giving drink to every wild animal, the wild assess quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, to bring forth food from the earth. And wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine, and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the field are watered abundantly, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. In them, the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The rocks are a refuge for the conies. You made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness, and it is night, when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young lions roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creation and creatures. There is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountains and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Our gospel reading today is hopefully going to sound very familiar to you, but I hope we can hear it in you today. It comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, 35 to 45, the request of James and John. James and John, the, son of, the sons of Debedes, they came forward to Jesus and they said to him, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, well, what is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, appoint us to sit, one at your right and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink of the cup that I drink or be baptized by the baptism that I are baptized with? And they replied, yes, we're able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or my left is not mine to appoint, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the other ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles are those whom they recognize as a, ruler lord, a ruling lord over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be a servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Here ends our hearing of these scriptures for the day. Might we be granted insight and a vision and a hope from the one who loves us so much and who has given us his holy word. Does anybody know Dr. Seuss? Well, everybody's hand ought to be up. Did you ever, did you ever, um, does this sound familiar to you? I speak for the trees. Now, what is the tree that he's talking about? The truffular tree. And remember, they're, they're getting kind of cut down and destroyed at a rapid pace. And this person, Dr. Seuss, is talking about, says, I speak for the trees. Who will speak for the trees? I think that's one of the questions here in this psalm, this beautiful psalm. Who will speak up for the trees? Who will speak up for the earth? Who will speak up for the beauty that's around us? The, the, the leaves that change color, the sky. How about that, was it called the aurora? Did you see, anybody see that color in the sky? Who's going to speak for that? Who's going to speak? Let us pray. Gracious God, that we might in these few moments remember that somehow you have empowered us and you have given us the responsibility to speak for trees, for nature, for your animals, for your kingdom, for all the things that you have put in our world, that bless us and remind us that you are active in our world, that you have created out of nothingness, you have formed a beautiful place for us. So hear us and be with us as you reflect upon this psalm. Remind us and build us up to indeed be your caretakers and your ambassadors and to speak for your natural world. Amen. Well, this psalm tells us the lesson of God creating. And God created apart from us. Now, that doesn't sound like such a big thing to say, but is there anything you can think of in this world that we enjoy that either we didn't create, we didn't cook it, we didn't make it, we didn't create it, we didn't like manufacture it. There's not many things, but God created this whole beautiful world in spite of us. Apart from us, we have been given a wonderful world like Louis Armstrong sings. 
Trees are green, red roses. And God says in the scriptures, it's good. Now, I know that our hearts have been touched by creation and we feel some pangs of guilt because over the years and what is happening in our world, we've had this deep love, and I, I would say all of us, our deep love for the creative world because I was thinking today, or actually this week, about all of the movies <clears throat> and all the millions of dollars which have gone in to big hit movies. Think about Hoot. Anybody see that? Bambi? Anybody see that? Think about Wally. -E. Did you ever see that? I mean, I'll tell you some movies that you all, this would be a good thing to do on a Saturday afternoon in winter. It's Wally -E is an amazing, visionary, hilarious, and sad picture. Walt Disney pictures a future when it's dominated by endless landscapes of garbage. Completely devoured of life except for this lovable little cockroach. And I don't really like cockroaches, but this lovable little cockroach. And it's clear that he's like the last robot on Earth. He's mute, but he does have this message. And how about, I would say many years ago, but Eric Aaron Brockovich. The movie was about a real life environmentally advocacy woman. And it talked about polluted waters and water supplies. And have you ever heard or seen Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest? I'm telling you some things. I'm giving you opportunities. To th you can write these down. Don't, you don't have to pay extra for this service. You can just take these ideas and have something to do when you have a day off. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, it's an animation of with um, ecological kinds of roots. It explores the interconnection between humanity and the planet. And in the last rainforest, it's the most treasured environmental film. It's set in like this um, Australia kind of a place in the rainforest. And the film takes loggers and pits them against this magical world that's in the woods. I was also thinking about tree hovers, huggers, do you remember, it's, 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 I would say 50, 60 years, but the, the tree huggers, when they were going to cut down these trees, and the woman said, no, no, I'm going to hug this tree. So she started hugging the tree, and people would come, to, they were cutting down the forest, come on, get off that thing, no, no, I'm hugging this tree. She stayed in there, I think it was like, a, I want to say five months or something, she stayed in there, hugged that tree, and guess what? They saved that forest. That's people who speak for the trees. And how can we forget Al Gore telling us the truth of global warming to any who had ears and hearts to see our part in the environmental disaster? And what I've read about this is it depends on who you talk to. To some people, this was the most important movie of the century, and to others, it was the most damaging film because it's sort of, it, in some ways, it kind of put us on sort of two spots, people that like didn't believe in global warming and people who did believe in global warming and people who could see it and people who couldn't. But let me say that if you haven't seen that movie, it's worth seeing. And it was basically a PowerPoint presentation and it made $50 million. So somebody wanted to see it. Well, I read these words this week by Catherine Bostrom. Just put your, put your imagination caps on. Imagine a world where all creation lives in perfect harmony, a world where there's sparkling clean waters, unpolluted air, you don't see the smog, mountains that are really majestic, whose surfaces are not scraped or scarred by bulldozers or asphalt in a world where the womb of the earth is not gutted by mines of any kinds, where forests, forests never tremble at the sound of a chainsaw. Imagine a world where litter refers to the birthing of animals who leap and crawl and sleep with no fear of a cage or steel trapped. And birds are not plucked up and plumaged with, fed with fishing nets. Where ivory is not something people kill for. Plastic accumulates in our oceans on our beaches 
and it has become a, a global crisis. If you don't know that, yeah, you've been sleeping. If you look at any kind of an article and you see any kind of, they're, they're like a whole um, islands that are made out of plastic. That's because we have so much plastic. It's not just us, but it's the world that's doing this. And it's said that, it's said that it swirls around and, and kind of, uh, it makes up 40% of the world's ocean surface. Now, that's amazing, because you know what? God didn't make it that way. And at the current rate, it says that plastics are expected to outweigh all the fish in the sea by 2050. Now, that is sad news, and we should be upset about it. The Earth's average surface temperature in 2022, in 2022 tied with 2015 as the fifth warmest on record. And that was according to NASA. I didn't make this up. We know it's alarming, the, the long-term warming trends. Our clam climates now have how many more forest fires? I don't remember growing up. Look, I'm 68, and I don't remember growing up and seeing and hearing so many about the forest fires. Maybe there were, but forest fires. And how about the hurricanes? They're getting much stronger. The droughts are wrecking havoc. The sea levels are rising. Imagine a world completely compatible with peace and tarnished beauty. And that's what we read about in this psalm. Now, I am hoping that everybody here at some point has gone out on a road trip. Those of us who are a little older might have been a cross-country road trip that we always dreamed of taking, but I hope we've gone out on a road trip. And I hope we've been on some of those roads where you look up and you see the majesticness of mountains and you look down and see water, and you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm so close to that, it goes off like that. But anyway, I'm glad, I'm hoping everybody has been and seen that. And what has happened is it's not that same scene. Those, that was years ago. Now you go back to some of those same places and it looks very different. We know our water is eroding. This is not something I'm making up. You know that if you go back to places where you used to go to swim or to go into the ocean, things are different. We saw it in Florida recently. This is what James Weldon Johnson said in a, these famous words. And this, it's a poet, poem called Creation. This is the most beautiful. As far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in the cypress swamp. And then God smiled and light broke. And the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. That is the world that God created. And this psalm today, we have that world. And it's extraordinarily good news, actually. We can sit back, we can breathe in deeply, the gift of air that God has given us around us, and we can ponder the depths and breadth of God's creative ability. Interestingly enough, God did not pull any strings, didn't have an architect making up a set of blueprints or any law to decide where the moon should go or the sun should be or when it should rise and set. There were not townships in the world counting the trees or stars or even stray animals. And nowhere, this is really interesting, nowhere does God discuss money. In that beautiful world we're in, Nowhere did God discuss money, or nowhere did God say which group would own this territory, or who would own Pennsylvania, or who would own Israel, who would own anything, any land, any nature, any animals. There were no boundaries listed there. There were no lines that were drawn. And all that is growing is organic. Now, those of us who like to buy organic things love that idea because you know as well as I do, when you go in to buy something that doesn't have preservatives, it costs you more. It's organic, and somehow we are placed tenderly in this largest, best organic garden in the universe. And what's our job? Our job is to love, to enjoy, to respect, to gentle, gentle, gently and tenderly take care of what belongs to God. 
And that's the point I think all of us around the world miss. This world does not belong to us. It never did, it's never gonna. It's not just the Native American thought of who, you know, you can't own land, it's God's thought. We look around and we think, maybe this world would have been much better off if we wouldn't have been placed in the middle of it with beauty and nature. All that God created was to be interconnected and in a relation and live in harmony. And we say to ourselves, well, we need to remember this world, we say, often say, this is the world we're leaving to our children. We want to protect it and we don't want to destroy it. But how about if you don't say that? How about if we don't look at it as heirs to leave to our children, but it's God's. It was God's in the first place. It's not ours. It never has been. It was God's creation, not ours. And what we're leaving behind is God's. So we're not really leaving it behind. God brought it here literally from the book of the Bible in Genesis. It talks like this. God would want humans to act responsibly as stewards to the environment, meaning to actively care for and protect the natural world by conserving resources. We've heard this before. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Reducing waste, making choices that minimize the harm of the planet, and align it to the concepts of being entrusted. You and I were entrusted. When you walk on a piece of land, when I walk on a piece of ground, I was entrusted to take care of that. God would want humans to act responsibly to reduce waste, to minimize, to love the world as God does. And I, I do think this psalm, if you read it again, and I hope you'll read it again at home, it's actually a kind of tough psalm to read because you realize everything isn't the way when it, when it was first created. It should call us to be enthusiastic environmentalist. And if someone calls you an environmentalist, that's not a bad word. Good for you that someone saw you, that someone thought you had motives outside of your own. Cutting back on the possibilities of carpooling, you know, we can preserve water with heat, we can protect large species of animals, we can use less paper products even, and I wasn't here for the picnic last week, but did we use paper products? And could everybody have brain, you know, their own plate and silverware? Could we bring a cup when we have coffee? I mean, somebody said to me, you can't do it, but that's not true. If you, bring, if you go to Wawa, I'm just telling you that it's cheaper too. I'm giving you a little, another little inside information. If you, have a, if you have a cup that has a lid on it and you go and fill it up, it'll charge, they'll charge you less for your coffee. Did you know that? Don't get one of the styrofoams. Don't even get one of the paper ones. You gotta think ahead like that. 104 reminds us that this great gift of God God gave us this place and provided us with such beauty that we might live and prosper in that beauty and that we might, you know, when you look around, think about that sky, when you look around and you see it, it should call us to say, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me something beautiful to look at when my day is so gloomy. Thank you for giving me this hope of a flower, a big sunflower, when I am sick. Thank you that you cared enough about me to provide for me a world. And I will take care of it. Amazingly, God loves us, doesn't give up on us, despite what we have done to the world, and still sees the world as beautiful. And I love the, font, the fact that in those, in those Genesis passages, it says, God looks around and says, it's good. It's good. My prayer is that we would keep it like that as, as great as we can, as long as we can, that God might be proud of what we're doing. Let us pray. For the times, oh God, when beauty just surprises us, when we look around at your heavens and we say your heavens are telling us a story of amazing good news, when we look around and we see your trees that indeed are clapping and singing for joy, when we hear your birds and we look around and we say, if you care for one of those birds, you care for us. When we look around and we say, we are to take care of what you have entrusted us with, 
It's not ours to give away or decide who gets to live here and there. It's your world. May we play by your rules. May we care by your love. Gracious God, our prayers are many. I'm praying today for all of those who have not had the opportunity to go out and see the great west and to see the beautiful, beautiful sculptures and, and land that you have made for us, the petrified forest, the, the big painted mountains, the skies and the horizons that seem to come together. Thank you that so many of us have seen those things. And those of us who have not, we ask that you might give to us that image of hope of a day when all can see those things and we can know the goodness that you have made and we can provide as we move forward. We offer our prayers today, O oh God, for our world and for your people. We name again John and Catherine, Agnes, and Anne, Peter and Robert, Robin, for Janice and Victor, for all who care for Victor and all who will attend his service and all that surrounds those who have lost someone they have loved, for Leroy and Ruth, for Terry and Melissa, for Joyce, for John and Miriam, for Steve and Debbie. We pray for Joan and John, the friends of Robert, Nancy Metzger, for Carrie and Lacey, for a new baby, Gracie Ray, for Roberta and Jeffrey, for Judy, for Jean, for Grace, for William, for James, for Donald, for Sandy, for Milton, for Linda, for Sherry, and for Colin, and for Colleen. And all who come today, O oh God, bless us with your presence. Remind us of the love that has been poured out for us in the gift and promises of Jesus the Christ. As we breathe in your love and as we know that this world is a beautiful world that you have given to us, we give you thanks as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I believe this church does not get uh, confused when something new happens. So I'm going to ask you to turn to a different page. I'm going to ask you in the same hymnal to turn to 178, and the choir has already practiced it, so they can carry us a little bit. And we're going to sing Blessings and Honor and Glory and Power, 178 in our same hymn, hymnal. <laughs>
then out into the world and be filled with good courage. Hold fast to all that is good and render to no person or people or situations in the world any kind of distrust or anger. Go into the world and be of good courage. Go with the God who has loved you, the Jesus who has redeemed you. Go with the gift of the Holy Spirit who has been with you and will be with you as you journey forward. Go with God's grace and my brothers and my sisters, my friends in Christ. Go in peace. Amen.